Today's lesson is about how to use a pedigree chart. Um, the nice thing about pedigree charts is we can use those to quickly analyze family histories uh, and trace various traits back. Uh, a lot of times they're used to trace different genetic disorders, but they don't have to be. You could trace something like hair color or any other common trait. So I know you've seen pedigree charts before, so just a refresher on how they operate. Uh, symbols. Males are usually designated with a square, females with a circle. Uh, I've seen pedigree charts that use a triangle when the, 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 the uh, sex of the particular child wasn't known, so that's also a possibility. Uh, a sexual union. So if we have offspring, sexual unions are shown by a connecting bar between the male and female. And then the offspring are shown as a bar that drops down. Uh, the first child is usually over here on the left. The second child is next. And it goes from left to right in terms of order of children. So in this particular pedigree, we have a female parent, a male parent. We have three offspring. And these offspring, we have two girls, one boy. All right. So in your uh, homework, one of the things you're going to be looking at is this pedigree worksheet. Just getting used to how these things operate. Um, if you're tra tracing a trait, usually the trait is indicated by a solid fill. So we're looking at a trait here called Huntington's disease. Uh, we have three generations. Generation 1, Generation 2, Generation 3. And then each generation has uh, the children numbered in here to kind of help you figure out where everything is at. So the red squares on here, the ones that are shaded in, these represent individuals with Huntington's disease. And then you have several questions to ask about this. One of the questions I want to highlight here is number two. There are no carriers for Huntington's disease. You can have it or you don't have it. With that in mind, is Huntington's disease caused by a dominant recessive trait? So our next lesson is about using pedigree charts with dominant and recessive traits. And uh, we'll be looking at, at sex-linked traits as well. And this is where things get more complicated at. So to prepare you for number two here, I made a little chart here. Um, we've got three different genotypes that this trait could have. So Huntington's disease I've called letter A. And the dominant, of course, is capital. Recessive is lowercase. So think about this. If Huntington's disease is a dominant trait, then what would genotype capital A, capital A have? Well, if it's dominant trait, this would be Huntington's. Because if you have the dominant trait, you, you have the disease. What about lowercase a, I'm sorry, capital A, lowercase a? Well, again, you have capital A, so this is also Huntington's disease. What about in the case where you have both the recessive traits? Well, if you have both recessive traits, and I just capitalize it, didn't want to capitalize. If you have both recessive traits, then you don't have Huntington's disease. So this is the case of a dominant trait. Now... What if it's a recessive trait? So let's take a look at that possibility. So we'll delete all these out. So this time Huntington's is the lowercase a. So recessive. How does that look? Well, in the case of capital A, capital A, no disease. In the case of capital A, lowercase a, well, again, there's no disease because they have the dominant trait. And what about in the case of lowercase a, lowercase a? Well, this time it would, they would have Huntington's. But one thing we can say here about capital A, lowercase a, is that this individual is a carrier. They could pass that lowercase a on to other individuals, other offspring. So even though they don't have the particular disease, they're a carrier for it. So that's how this operates if it were a recessive trait. All right. Usually when you're taking a look at recessive traits, um, 
recessive individuals are always half shaded. So if you take a look at our third pedigree on here, individuals with the particular trait are fully shaded in, so fully blue. So this individual here is fully blue. And carriers would be half shaded. So this, this woman here, this female, is a carrier of the trait. This female is a carrier of the trait. This female is a carrier of the trait. So that's how you show that right there, is you half fill them. So hopefully that will help you answer a question like number two. Um, and number six here on the hitchhiker's thumb, if you don't know what hitchhiker's thumb is, do a search for it. So you know what hitchhiker's thumb is, is like. A uh, hitchhiker's thumb isn't a really true like genetic trait. You, It's not a case of you either have it or you don't. There's actually a whole bunch of different variation. Some people have a little bit of a hitchhiker's thumb. Some people have a very sharp hitchhiker's thumb. thumb. All right, so hopefully that explains how to fill this out. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, let me know on Teams. Thank you.